market update for Wichita, Kansas. This is for the month prior of June, and I'm going to go over some local data, national data, and, and one article that shows you where our Wichita market's at. Uh, but before we get into all that, like, comment, subscribe, share, all those fun things that come with helping this channel grow, supporting this local small business and your local community. Um, so with all that, we'll go ahead and get into it. And we're going off the facts and the data, and I'll give you my insights, my opinion, um, all that kind of thing. So first, we're going to go over the local data, what the local data says. Uh, we're going to go over how Wichita was ranked as the number one for home price appreciation. And actually, we're going to go over that quick because that's a pretty fast one. Um, and then I'll go through the data and show you this. So Rich, Wichita ranked number one for home price increases in 2023. And what this is coming from is Wichita saw a 21.2% price change in the last year where our average sale price in April was 259,000. On the April of last year, it was 213,000. So that shows you how much our market has changed. And I think Wichita natives were used to this price, could stomach that, but this price is a lot higher than what we were used to. And there's a lot of different reasons and factors that go into it. One is that Wichita has historically been low priced and undervalued with everything, plus the low interest rates drove all that up. So the combination of both of those is why we saw such a drastic change. So if your tax appraisal went up, your tax record went up, it's because our entire market went up uh, that went with it. And what happened in a lot of ways is Wichita was accurately being valued, in my opinion. Um, we've had low home prices for the longest time. And honestly, we've been underpriced for a long time. So we saw a market adjustment up because of just the value of our city and the demographic and the size of it but then also the low interest rates help spur that on um, as well. So it's kind of those things where we got adjusted to an appropriate level of pricing with where home prices and values are at. Now, if you bought a house in the last five years or five years or more, then you hit the dang lottery. And I hope you realize this, how much this is a good thing if you owned real estate uh, five years plus. If you didn't and you waited, now you got to pay that much more. Um, and this one will give you a really good idea of smart asset reports. The home sale prices in Wichita have increased more than 69% since 2019. That's five years we've seen a 69% increase when the average price was 153,000 according to Zillow data. So Wichita is no longer a 160 average price point market. We're a 260 average price point market. And I get it, a lot of people's attitudes, behaviors, perspectives, mindsets hasn't adjusted yet. You know, with any human situation, which is what a lot of this is based off of, it takes a while for us to adjust to change and adjust to a new normal. But this is the new normal, and it really comes down to just how bad um, do you want a house. So that's one of the biggest things that I've seen um, with all that. So you can see here the 10 metro areas in the United States where home sales price increased the most from April 23 to April 24, which stock Candace was number one. Um, so that's a large, drastic difference, even just in last year. And I can tell you right now, they're not coming down as much as you guys think they're going to. And you have the sky is falling type of situation. It's not, which leads me right into my next piece, which is the number of sales is down 14.6% in June, but the price increases 6.9%. Um, on everything, which an average price of 245. Again, that data that you just saw was from April and all this text is cool, but really what we need to look at is the graphs to visually display this thing and speak on and also not take too much of your time. Um, this is interesting to note though, we sold less houses in June than we did in May. Typically June is one of our highest performing months, as you can see from 2023 in the green and 2022 in the red. Uh, the number of sales is down to 873, but the prices, oh, where'd it go, is up. This is the highest price we've seen. So the average price of closed listings was 275000 And so even though the number of sales has been the lowest it's been ever, the price is the highest it's ever been. And no, it's not going to peak and crash, just like you can see in 2022, it's stabilized here all the way throughout the year. 23 is stabilized pretty much all the way throughout the year. Then we saw this weird big dip in October, but then honestly, we still had a good price um, into November, December. So we saw a pretty steady price 
stability throughout this whole thing all the way throughout the year. And part of this is this is what's closing. Typically, the best time of year to sell is spring, summer, and then into the fall. And the winter is still solid um, from all those people that are still hanging on from the spring and the summer, still need to sell their house, and the price is still good. The winter is the most brutal in our market, and you just got to look at the data that goes with it. Um, same thing with closed listings, my month. This is the number of listings. It's really dead in January and February, and then it really starts to take off. March, April, May, part of that is weather, part of that is personal seasonal reasons, um, as far as like school and lifestyle reasons that go with this, and then it starts to trail off into the uh, fall and winter months. Everything's a case by case scenario, but we look at the data to navigate your life reason, which is what I'll get to, into at the end of this. Uh, let's see, average days on market is 24, median is six. So depending on who you watch, who you listen to, depending on Close listings, it takes 24 days on average to sell a house, not six. This is for those outliers, for the ones that go on the market, sell right away, that are super pretty, super nice. And there is some bidding wars over a few of them, but those are more the exception than the rule. The rule is typically your house is going to sit longer before somebody is going to buy it um, for a couple of reasons. One, the interest rates are higher, but then two, Wichita natives do think that home prices are overvalued and they just haven't adjusted their, their perception and how they look at things. Some of them look at it as like, oh, it's too expensive when in reality they can't afford it. That's different. Or they won't afford it. They won't pay it because they haven't adjusted psychologically, behavior wise to this new normal of home prices crashing. Because the truth is we don't want home prices to crash. If they crash, a lot of people lose a lot of money is the thing. So really, if you're rooting for the downfall of a lot of people, it's kind of a sick, twisted way of trying to get ahead in this world. Um, active listings by month. We can see we have the most number of listings in a while. Um, but even in 2023 in the green, you can see we did get up here all the way into October, November, December. And I think that's why we still have a pretty steady amount of sales and price hold, through, hold true to here. Um, it just means you're going to have to hold true to your price um, on everything. So we'll see how these things trail off for the rest of the year. Nobody can predict the future. Um, but keep in mind, like this is still only like 2.1 months of supply. In order to be a balanced neutral market, not even a buyer's market, um, it has to get to six months of supply. And we're at two months of supply. So we're still four months away of supply. So we're two thirds of the way away from a neutral balanced market on everything. So to think this is going to go back to like an 08 or a a buyer's market, I think, is just being kind of foolish and pessimistic, really. Um, so active listings, you can see where I think people are starting to um, get more of the hint of your higher price listing as it's selling. And just because you want to throw it on there as high as all get out doesn't mean it's going to sell necessarily. And you're seeing a good amount of the active listings or higher price listings. Throw it out there. If it sells, great. If it doesn't, we'll just stay, which is a lot of people's attitude. Um, active listings, average days on markets, 58 across the entire market. Median days is 27. So of the ones that are on the market still that haven't sold, they've been sitting on there for a long time. I don't know where that country accent came from, but it did. <laughs> uh, month supply, like I said, we're at 2.1 month supply. Nothing to cause alarm about. Just like 2023, we got there towards the end of year two. Even if this thing gets up to three or four months supply, really all that means is you have a lot more selection as a buyer. You have a lot more options, a lot more availability. So if it's the right lifetime or life reason and time in your life to buy a house, this is really good for you. But even then, we're still not even near as high as 2018 with everything. Um, you really have to get to like an 08 level of inventory to really have any cause for concern, which... I don't see that happening. Could be wrong though. Even if it does, there's opportunity in every market. I'll be here to help you navigate it depending on what your life situation is. So new listings by month, we're not really seeing necessarily a whole lot of a difference in trend there other than we're having new listings, not having as many new listings come to the market. They're really not too significant, still falling about the same curve as far as new uh, retail inventory comes with that. And about one, one out of every three of these is new construction. So 33% of it is new construction, to give you an idea. Uh, let's see. Average price for new listings, 288. Let's see. All right. None of that. rest of that stuff you probably really care about. So 
you like this report, let me know. I can email it to you. Pretty easy to do. Just leave your email or shoot me a message below. We'll get it to you. And then as far as the national data, uh, new listings are up year over year. A lot of that has to do to the lock-in effect. People having sub-4% mortgage rates aren't returning. Additionally, some newbie investors who piled in the market during the boom are realizing that being a landlord isn't easy. And that's the majority of people who bought uh, rentals and flip houses is newbies wanting to get in the game and realizing it's a lot harder than you think. And you have to have a lot more money than you realize to really actually have it be leveraged and passive. If you're just trying to do onesies, twosies, threesies, it's a lot harder than you realize. And then you're trying to do a lot of the work yourself still. So, um, so slow, so yeah, sellers are slowly coming back to market. We'll continue to have gradually more sellers. It's just kind of more of a normal, stable market. Um, it's lower and slower, but it's not crashing. It's not dead. So home builders have been catching up. Um, and really what it comes down to is how bad do you really want to buy a house? Because this reason right here is usually why you're buying. Newly married, newly engaged, new relationship, new couple, new family, need more size. All these life reasons of why you buy a house. Because really what it comes down to is the reason you buy a house is because you want a house. And you want the lifestyle and all of that that comes with it. Even if the price is higher, the interest rates higher, the monthly payments higher, you can't always trade in dollars and money for memories. Um, but you have these headlines that are also not entirely helping us out, saying it's the worst time ever to buy a house. You know, when will home prices be affordable again? The truth is, it's not necessarily can you afford it. It's do you make enough money to pay what you got to pay to have a home and a house? Because a lot of those things are luxuries. And they fill an emotional need and a personal need more than they fill a food, water, and shelter need. Um, and that's okay. Just we got to call a spade a spade and put it out there uh, for what it is. And a lot of these headlines are clickbaity, which I'm sure you're not surprised by. Same thing with um, I hired an agent to sell my home to, have to pay the buyer's broker now. There's a lot of changes, changes coming to our industry, which we're still trying to navigate. At the end of the day, like you need marketing and sales reps to market your home, sell your home, bring you buyers, all that comes with that. Even though you can always not pay a buyer's agent commission, it's always been an option. It's just usually not in your best interest because your home will sit. It won't sell. You're going to cut off one of the biggest forces out there, which is all of these agents, all of these realtors working to bring you a buyer. And instead of trying to go cheap and not play fair, not play nice, thinking you're saving money, but in the long run, you're really hurting yourself, hurting the home sale and you're losing more money than if you just followed the system and made it work. Uh, Americans' opinion of best long-term investment, still real estate. It's one of the safest things to put your money into, to invest your money. It's your house. There's also the financial well-being that comes from it, the emotional well-being. Uh, real estate is really the sure thing for long-term. Business is the big thing, but it's riskier. You really want to know how people get ahead and what they do um, with their savings with their lifestyle with their income and where a lot of people put their wealth and grow their wealth for the majority of americans it's in their home it's in their primary home um it's in some rentals it's in real estate because it is safe because it is sure um, if you're a little bit more risk tolerant and you're a calculated risk taker like myself you'll invest in businesses you'll invest in equity you invest in growth where saying your primary home um is an investment, but it's not nearly as a big a payoff as some of the others, but it's not as risky as others either. As long as you can reasonably afford it with your personal financial situation, personal income, you can sit on it, maintain it, take care of it. Like it's a very safe bet um, with everything. So anyway, our research shows, yeah, it's still the vast majority of prospective home buyers overwhelmingly feel buying a home now or in the future is the best decision for them in the long run. And a lot of this comes down to not just the financial means of it, but the emotional value of home ownership. I can personally attest to this. I own my own house. I've been living here for a little over two years. I got a dog here and it's just me. But at the same time, that place of sanctuary, that place of peace, that place of stability and the emotional fulfillment rather than the added stress that comes with it is one of the biggest things that enables me to launch from a place of stability and peace and have a structure at my home and what really matters and what's important. And most people would rather own a home to have the sense of permanence and emotional stability provides rather than the flexibility of renting, dealing with landlords, dealing with renters, dealing with all the different things that come with that type of lifestyle. Nothing against it. That's what 
what you choose to do. I know some people that own some pretty cool rentals. I've rented before in my life when it made sense while I was flipping houses, but I still growing equity. I was still owning a lot of houses, but I wasn't necessarily living in there. But really, when you buy a house, you buy a house because you want a house is really what it comes down to. All the things that come with buying a house and the memories that could be made and the lifestyle and the quality of life that goes with all of that. Um, but anyway, that's kind of the point we're making right now is that, yes, it's more expensive. Yes, it costs more, but ultimately it's still worth it. When you look back on your life and you say, did I want to make more money? Did I want to save more in my house? Did I want to rent forever? Or did I want to create a home? Did I want to create family? Did I want to create memories? Did I want to create all those lasting things that matter more than money um, on everything? So, yeah, that's basically what we're getting at here is the benefits of owning a home instead of renting. You can read. You don't need me to read. You can get the idea of why you'd want to own a home um, and all that. I know prices and interest rates get a lot of attention, but they shouldn't be the only part of your home buying decision making process. After all, the answer to the question is, is right now a good time to buy a house boils down to whether the time is right for you to start your new chapter, to invest in what makes you happy, and to do what makes sense for your personal life reason and life situation. Most of it has to do with having a sense of privacy and security, having a good place for your family, having a good place to raise your children, build a life, settle down, establish roots, all these things that come with it, and that kind of thing. So... That's all I got for this market update, the long version. If you stuck around this whole time, I appreciate you watching as always. Um, check out more videos I got around the channel. Also look at my website below. I'd love to talk to you and work with you. I'm going to be putting out a lot more info products and content for you around owning a home in Wichita, living in Wichita. And then if you're an agent watching this, um, got some other agent training stuff. They'll be on a different channel. But appreciate you watching as always. Like, comment, subscribe, share, all those fun things. And we'll talk with you later. See ya.